The application is therefore declined. I call on Government Order of the Day number one. Appropriation 2012-13 Financial Review Bill, Committee Stage. I declare the House in Committee for consideration of the Appropriation 2012-13 Financial Review Bill, uh, Review Bill, Mr Chairman. Mr Speaker. Mr Chairman. The House is in committee. Tena koto to Nakwe etafori inga iwi inga reo inga hawe fa tena koto tena koto tena koto katoa. Greetings, honourable members. Right, the House is in committee on the Appropriations 2012-13 Financial Review Bill. This debate is the committee stage of the Appropriation Financial Review Bill. And the time allowed for this debate is four hours and comprises two distinct elements. The first is the debate on the annual financial statements of the government, as reported on by the Finance and Expenditure Committee. Once this has been concluded, the committee debates individual financial reviews of departments, offices of parliament and non-departmental appropriations as reported on by select committees. The debate on the government's financial position may be a fairly wide-ranging one, but the debates on the individual financial reviews of departments, offices of parliament and non-departmental appropriations should be relevant to their performance in the 2012-2013 financial year and their current operations. The compendium of financial reviews and non-departmental appropriations available for debate is on the table. Members. A member, other than the responsible minister, may have no more than two calls on each financial review. At the conclusion of the debate, a single question is put on the provisions of the bill. There is no amendment or debate on this question. When the chairperson reports the bill to the House, it is set down for third reading forthwith. There is no debate on the third reading. <laughs> so will members please turn to the report of the Finance and Expenditure Committee on the annual financial statements of the government. Question before the House. Is it the report of the Finance and Expenditure Committee on the annual financial statements of the government for the year ended June 30, 2013, be noted. I note that this report also relates to the Finance and Expenditure Committee's <laughs> financial review of the Treasury, and so the performance in the 2012-13 financial year and current operations of the Treasury may also be debated. I'm looking to recognise some honourable members. Ah, I call the honourable. David Park. I almost expected a bell for yourself, sir. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. I had to get it out. <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker, the financial uh, review conducted in the Financial and Expenditure Committee of uh, the Treasury and the Minister of Finance highlighted one thing amongst many, uh, which was that five years into this government, they haven't yet run a surplus. Five years into this government, they haven't run a surplus. Indeed, they're close to racking up an additional $60 billion worth of borrowing since they... What's it? $60 billion since they came... To, oh, who's caused that? Actually, that was contributed to by the government's unaffordable tax cuts that were weighted to the most wealthy in society who needed them less than others. Mr Speaker, let's contrast that with what... The Secretary for the Treasury acknowledged in uh, Christchurch just a week ago, or two weeks ago now, the Secretary for the Treasury is not known for his exuberance. He told a Christchurch audience that having a buffer in the Crown's balance sheet 
help New Zealand to manage the double blow of the Canterbury earthquakes and the global financial crisis, i.e. he was giving credit to the prior government for creating a buffer on the Crown's balance sheet. Now, we hear from, the, we hear from Mr English saying that there were a decade of deficits, that they inherited a terrible circumstance from the prior government, which, of course, is not true. The prior government ran nine budget surpluses in the row. Six per cent of GDP at one stage, amongst the highest surpluses in the developed world, at a time when the, the likes of the National Party politicians who were in power in countries in Europe or in the United States, or indeed some Labour governments in the United Kingdom, they were running smaller surpluses or deficits in a time of plenty, so that when the global financial crisis hit, they already had high government debt. So the legacy of the last Labour government was low debt, right. very low debt, nil net government debt, gross government debt down from 38 to 18 per cent of GDP. And that is why this government has had room to move. That is exactly what the Secretary for the Treasury was saying last week in Christchurch. Mr uh, Chairman, we've just had turned down an urgent debate, somewhat surprisingly, given that the, uh, the uh, report that I'm about to refer to, the latest bungle by the Minister of Finance, was uh, in a, a recent period rather than the period under financial review. But we've learned uh, just in the last week that there was a billion dollar mistake by the Treasury. They miscalculated income inequality figures in New Zealand by $1.2 billion by, in the main, double counting the accommodation supplement that is received by low income families. They also made some mistakes around working for families tax credits. The effect of that was that the Brian Perry report into income inequality, which is the figure that the national government always revert to because they don't want to talk about asset inequality, they don't want to talk about decreasing uh, home ownership rates, both of which are measures of inequality growing, they don't want to acknowledge that the only time that there has been a substantial decrease in annual income inequality, a narrow measure though it is, was under the last Labour government through working for families. And so the only statistic they were willing to talk about was the Brian Perry report on income inequality. We now know that they knew that that figure was wrong. We know that they have known since December. The Minister of Finance confirmed today in the House that he has known since the 10th of December and that the Prime Minister knew on or about that date and so did the Minister of Social Development. And yet they were all, during the earlier part of this year, when we were having debates in this House about income inequality, using the Brian Perry report that they knew was flawed. They knew was flawed, not by a small amount, but by a $1.2 billion of additional income that was attributed to low and middle income households that they did not in fact receive. So that report understated income inequality. They don't talk about the other measures of inequality that show it rising quickly. The census showed a between census increase in the gap between household incomes in South Auckland. 19%. <coughs> Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Member Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, um, Mr Chair. The issue of the government...